Hey, this is Dougie Almeida, and you're listening to The Anthony Rogers Show, right here. You are now listening to the best show in the universe, The Anthony Rogers Show. You probably wish that this was your show, but it's not. It's The Anthony Rogers Show. Tell all of your friends to listen to this show. Hello, Anthony Rogers Show, the greatest show in the universe. Thanks for having us on. I'm Craig Reinhardt from Ben Sauce. We make an authentic Chipotle sauce right here in Bend, Oregon. Try to be the most authentic Chipotle heat for your table, kitchen, and your grill. Spice up your barbecue, put a straight on your eggs. If it's a little too spicy for you, of course, throw it in some mayo, ketchup, barbecue, make a killer aioli, Mexican crumb and lime as a drizzle. It's awesome. But in addition to us, you may know Ben. If you're uh, following Larry and his flask. And have you ever seen a hydro flask also from Bend, Oregon? So check us out. We make the most authentic chipotle sauce. It's an everyday hot sauce, but also a secret ingredient for those of you that cook. Check out our cinder dust as well. And definitely support our retail partners, but if you don't have one near you, hit us up online and we'll sell you one of our small combos or a large combo. The Anthony Rogers Show, thank you very much. Greatest show in the universe. Thank you. Welcome back to the greatest show in the entire universe. Uh, today we have an hilarious comedian. Uh, well, it's just on his show today. If you um, if you're watching or like look it up also. Uh, but uh, D- uh, Dougie Dangerous, how are you doing, man? What's up, bro? Long good, time good. no see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're getting tired of each other already. I feel like you know. I feel like we're married. I feel like we're like a relationship. <laughs> but uh, if you're listening now or watching now, uh, look up uh, Dougie's show. Uh, Wake up late with Dougie. I was just on there recently. Uh, for the second time, pretty funny show. Like, uh, and this is your second time on my show, I think, actually, too. Really? So, yeah, I think so. You were on it way back in the day, probably like uh, when it was like Texas Radio, maybe like two years ago or something. Ah, I think like uh, did I, did I just remind you of that? <laughs> yeah, well, dude, I, that's the thing. I'm getting at that age, like all the shit to remember. So it's like everything is two days, two weeks, two hours, two years. I don't remember anything anymore. <laughs> I remember, like, I remember the, I remember the top ten uh, acts of oral sex performed on me. I remember <laughs> the top ten. I still remember their faces and names. But uh, well, it's selective but, um, memory then, right? It's like, sl- like, uh, <laughs> it sounds really selective. Some things stick in the mind, Anthony. Yeah, you know, some things actually remain in your mind no matter how much drugs you take. How old are you? Not even that old. How old are you? Uh, I'm fifty four. Oh, that's not that old. You can't, you can't be using the excuses to forget about shit yet. You got 30 years. You got to. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's that's OK when you're in the comedy business and you have a guy who's 23 is about to get his Netflix special. And you're like, fuck, I'm 54. You know, at least I, you're I, more talented, though. <laughs> yeah, well, <that's> right. <laughs> you got that going for you, you know. Yeah, I appreciate it. Let's let's uh, let's hopefully other people figure that out. <laughs> How did you get into comedy originally? Like what was like your like introduction to it, I guess? Uh, my boss surprised me with a drug test. I, um, yeah, is that, a real, is that oh. serious? No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I always liked comedy, you know, growing up. I mean, like Roddy Dangerfield, you know, Sam Kinison, you know, Richard Pryor, um, you know, just comedy movies, um, the comedic ass. I wasn't a big thriller guy, you know, um, you know, and, and sci fi shit. You know, I did like some of that, but I love comedy. And, um, and I, was, I had to be a responsible young adult. You know, so I had to I had to make money and shit. I couldn't do what I wanted to do. Uh, and then I, when there was one day after my father passed, my mother passed, my wife looked at me and says, you know, we got money. You can do whatever the hell you want. You know, and I said, I don't want to wear a suit and tie every day anymore. You know, I don't want to answer to these old people with money and complain about, you know, when there's 15 cents less on their monthly dividend, but I made them $100,000 in the last year. You know what I mean? I had enough of that shit. And I said, it's time. It's time for me. It's time for me to do what I want. I went to an open mic and that was it. That's awesome. So uh, comedians do start in open mics. And I didn't realize that I didn't realize the actual comedians started in that. I've, I heard the rumors, but I didn't know that was like, uh, yeah. that was, that's actually how you started. That's good. That's, that's how people think uh, comedians should start. They think that uh, like a, lot of, a lot of the industry think that you should start out doing these open mics and then you evolve the clubs like you're doing now and stuff, you know? 
think that's, yeah. a, that's what a lot of people think. I think we had somebody post in Florida comedy scene uh, that they've only they've they've only performed a couple times, but everybody that saw him thought he was hilarious. <laughs> and he wanted that he needed help like getting to clubs, working at clubs. And uh, then the guy was stupid enough to post his video, and I thought, you know, who knows? Maybe this person there. Sometimes there, there's phenoms, right? Like people, yeah. incredibly funny. I mean, I know comics that have been around three or four years and already getting work. You know, they're just, that's just who they are. But um, but you know, this guy. I mean, he guy posted a video of him talking to himself in his room. You know, I, I, like sometimes I, I book shows and somebody says, "Yeah, can you send me a video?" Oh, you got to see a video. Go, yeah, of course I got to see a video. Anybody is a professional comic has a five minute video, a twenty minute. You know what I mean? You basically have a selection of videos to send people, whether it's for clean business or some shit. And, you know, the guy sends me a video of him telling jokes in front of a shower curtain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that's not a fucking video, bro. I mean, that just tells me that proves to me you're not working and I'm not going to be the first guy. But this particular person posted that they were hilarious and shit. And you watch the video and it was it was it was horrible. Right. <laughs> so I, I thought I said, let me be nice. I'm going to answer this thing. I said, this this guy's post reminds me of. How uh, when I was in high school, I thought I was the greatest lover on earth. And I had maybe a handful of experiences, you know, and I thought at that time I was the greatest lover on earth. If I only knew right? <laughs> I mean, you think like right, that happens. A lot of people get, get, get bitten by something and they're, they're intrigued with it and they're overwhelmed with it. And they think, what, this is it. This is, I'm, this, I'm, this is me, you know, and they suck. So yeah, like, uh, it sounds like job security. <laughs> Like yeah. for you, for you. <laughs> well, there's a shitload of comics, man. You know, what I mean, and nowadays everybody's a comic. You know what I mean? It, yeah. Guys who are attorney, people who are attorneys, doctors, they're all comics. You know, they want to get out there and make people laugh. So, um, you know, maybe that's the thing. You, you're amongst the many, but you got to stand out somehow. Well, yeah, you still got to be good, yeah, for sure. And then, like, you got you got to go through like a bunch of people on the internet shit talking you, and you got to go through. I mean, you got to go through a phase where you're not funny in front of a shower curtain, you know. But like, you, you got to go through that phase. I mean, like, like I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know who's good right off the bat, you know. I mean, some people might be, but I mean, yeah, you got to learn that stuff. It's like a band, you know. Bands don't just, you know, like the American Got Talent shit. You know, these have they haven't been on the road. Many of these people have been on the road like a band and working together and playing shit gigs and 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 learn and like developing their voice as a band right their sound that all that shit comes with time you know uh somebody asked me that today about my profession and they're like you know how do you get like the stock market's crazy how do you how do you how do you get through it i'm like well i've been doing it 32 years you know anytime you've been doing something a long time you're going to learn shit you know it, and it's not just knowing something it's proficiency you know there's a difference between knowing something and being proficient right <laughs> you know yeah that's I mean? true yeah, yeah. There's, a deep, there's a deep difference you got you got armchair you got armchair lawyers out there you know that they were talking about stuff on news and stuff like well you know oh, what happened in the impeachment or what happened here i'm like oh now you're a juris doctorate of law you know what i mean and like yeah well i i well you know law is not just knowing and be able to read a law it's the interpretation of that law you know that's why you know the old joke you know what's who's the what do they call the person who finishes first in law school and the, the person who graduates last they call them lawyers <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> but if you can hire one of those fucking idiots to, to keep you from going to jail make sure you hire the guy or gal uh that's on the top of the class uh, yeah <laughs> that's you brought up a lot of good points there i think like uh but uh <laughs> uh so you know you uh you worked in uh you work on uh like stock or you trade stock for yourself or like you have your own company or what do you what do you do you day trade too or are you uh, uh making investments for people i mean i am a licensed fiduciary oh, okay uh, and so it's a great name, right? Fiduciary. Yeah. It sounds like, you know, you shit your pants. That's, that's, you know, what does a fiduciary do? Well, they shit their pants. Um, is that, and, is uh, that yeah. your actual job or is that like a front for you being in the mafia? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's hey, why'd you fucking ask? <laughs> um, no, I, no, yeah, that, that's something I've done, you know, all my life. And, um, and blessed because now I could do it from a laptop. I could do it anywhere in the world, anywhere with the internet. I got a phone, I got a laptop. So, it, you know, I, I have the flexibility to do what I want. You know, I get to go where I want. I get to travel and get to do what I love and do it. So, yeah, it's um, I manage other people's money. I have my own account and my family's accounts. And then I have to I have like 50 or 60 individuals. I manage their wealth. That's Help crazy. How, how much money would someone need to come to you for this like thing? Like quarter million. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, if, you, if, you have, if you have a quarter million and you're under 55, or half a million and you're under 75. What uh, do you, uh, how, how much do you turn a quarter million into? 
uh, I could turn it into zero. <laughs> I, could, I, could buy, I could buy some Bitcoin and shit and some 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 cryptos. Um, no, I, uh, you know, it's it's all relative. Like I always tell people, like you want to make, you want your wealth to grow at least five points above inflation, right? So if there's no inflation, we're starting to see that now. You know, two or three percent. You want your wealth to be growing at least seven or eight percent. You know, to outpace that shit, and uh, and you know, you segregate money for purpose. You know, money in a bank. You know, money that you have in the bank. Everybody should have at least ten grand in the bank, minimum. You know, for, you don't give a shit how much it's making. You just want to make sure it's there. You know, I, I used to. Have, there was a difference. I'd go into some person's house or talk to them about their finances, and like, you'd ask the question like, how much money they have. You can't just ask somebody, hey, how much cash do you have? They're like, what the fuck, you think you're robbing them. You know, be like, hey, I got to ask you if one of your kids got arrested and you needed bail money, how much money do you have to get bail? <laughs> you know, uh, you know, oh, you met my kids. Yeah, I met your kids. And, um, you know, you ask people different. You know, um, if somebody was to come up, if you know, he says, ask if if one of your friends uh, is getting divorced and he wanted to sell you his Porsche, you know, could you come up with 50 grand tomorrow to buy it from him? A hundred thousand dollar car. So, you know, but uh, but that's the purpose of that money is having it right. Your retirement, money, your IRA money is supposed to be like an orange tree. You want to make sure you can put, pick fruit from it until the day you die. And you hope that tree just keeps getting bigger and bigger while you're picking from it. So, you know, shit like that. Make it simple, right? Keep it simple, stupid. You ever hear that, Anthony? Yeah, yeah. I know. That makes a lot of sense. Like, um, I, I wish I invested more in crypto this week because I, I put 300 bucks on in Monday and it's already up to four. It was up to like 450 bucks. I made 150 bucks off crypto this week off a small investment. I wish I would have put like fucking real money on it, you know? This episode is brought to you by Glitch Energy. Um, go to the link below, use promo code Best Show, and get a discount on a bunch of uh, gaming energy drinks and supplements and just awesome stuff. Uh, get a starter kit to figure out what you like flavor wise and function wise uh, right now. And like I said, use promo code Best Show, one word, and uh, get 25% off all your gaming. Well, you know, that's the thing. You, you got to have the money that's for the, the immediate shit. And then once you have that, once you once you get rid of all your debt and then now you have savings to k- make sure that you have enough savings so that you don't incur new debt, right? Cause shit always happens, right? Car breaks down, transvest, you know, fucking roof leak, whatever, right? That shit always happens. So you want to have that money. Once you have that, any money that comes in becomes discretionary. So it's, you can use it at your discretion. You know, it's like, Oh, I can, yeah, put that yeah. I can buy, you know, uh, some Bitcoin. I can buy some, whatever. Yeah. You know, I can buy some shares of fucking Facebook. Then it went fa- it went it with lost like 60, 70 points on Monday. You know, I you saw that. Yeah. yeah. So I had a bunch of people ask me, should I buy it? I'm like, oh, you should open an account with me. <laughs> I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> wants free advice, man. Yeah, that's why you, you got to have your own podcast to ask these questions to get the free advice, right? <laughs> so well, yeah, you know, it's cool. I want to do that because it's called Funny Fiduciary, uh, Funny Money with the Funny Fiduciary. And that it, that's what duo. it would be. It would be a weekly thing, but it has to go through all that just like this, this thing. I can't let my people know i'm doing something like this and talk about this advice thing you know otherwise i have to put a disclaimer out and everything so yeah yeah well you should do a thing where like you like like you you capture like a subject or something and then like you like if you want actual advice though like this is just a conversation we're fucking around if you want you i mean that's a good yeah that's a good idea man because i mean yeah you're not like this isn't one-on-one is everybody's situation is different everybody's money's different everybody's goals are different you know i mean everybody wants more money i guess but they want it for different reasons like someone for retirement someone like faster someone you know, i mean it just depends i guess right, right. yeah well you know if somebody says hey i want to retire well who does you know i mean <laughs> there's, some, there's some people you know i had a very long many years ago ladies like 60 61 years old she's like i want to retire and i sat down with her she had like 10 grand in the bank I'm like, well, this is a pen, not a fucking magic wand, lady. You know, <laughs> you can't, you know, what do you think? What are you going to get from 10 grand? You know, you're probably going to have to work. Yeah, I had to tell people, you're probably going to have to work until you're 70s. Yeah, move to, Th- move to fucking Thailand or something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> fucking open, open a bed and breakfast in Malaysia. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> Costa Rica and shit, you know, and get a fucking hut, you know, by the water. <laughs> Yeah, but, like, it, and it's like it's bad because these people just aren't taught it, man. Like they're basically like, well, I mean, like, like we're just not taught any of this shit. So, I, so like, it makes sense that we wouldn't know it. And if you don't have like a strong family or like like a strong like like relationship even or something, like you're not you're never gonna know this shit. You're never gonna be happy enough to to fucking even think about it or have the time. You know, it's like, and, and th- there are a lot of things that we never taught. I don't know about you, but no one ever taught me how to wipe my ass. <laughs> like you know, what I mean, I had to figure I- it out on my own. Now that I think about it, yeah, no. Nobody ever taught me how to shave. That's why I have this beard. Like I just yeah, like uh, <laughs> they never they never taught me. Somebody no, show him a razor. 
<laughs> but you're right. No, you got to be self-taught. Like, I think that's what a lot of entrepreneurs are. And like people do like, uh, like, like, I mean, that's a lot of money. And like, if you're doing a quarter million, you have like 50 clients. I mean, that's a lot of, I, that, that's a, this, this interview is changing from comedian to stockbroker now. <laughs> We're like, like, it's just completely, I, like, I, yeah, I knew loosely what you did, but that's, that's, I mean, that's, um, that's real. That's real. That's real talent, man. I mean, and I think like, that's me around longer in crypto. I mean, at least so far because crypto, they call it a currency, but it doesn't buy anything really. It's also, I mean, I could like, they're like, oh, the Taco Bell may take Dogecoin or something. I, I don't know. It goes up and makes me money, but I have no idea why. Like, I'm like, I'm an idiot. Like, I'm just like, I have no fucking clue why, but I'm like, my buddy made like uh, something like $100,000 last year off cryptocurrency. So I started paying attention to it. I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'd like to make that while I'm doing other shit, you know? Yeah. But I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything it, about it. it. Right now, like you said, it's a usage, right? It's not really a currency because. I mean, Ecuador recently made it their national currency because they don't have any currency. I saw it. Yeah, they made Bitcoin their currency, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, they're having issues with it. But it, it, it's really hard to exchange. You know, when one Bitcoin is worth $50,000, you know, if you want to go in and buy a pack of gum, you know, how much? I mean, fucking Point zero 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 five Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. whatever. Like it. And then you may buy it after not using it for a while. And, and that, that 50 cents piece of gun just cost you capital gains tax of ten thousand dollars oh, you know, yeah. you know I mean? so yeah. It's, yeah it's a storage it's it's like a storage of um wealth it has no yeah. transaction ability uh, a lot of states a lot of countries and sovereign because that's what it what debt like the u.s dollar it's backed by the sovereignty of the united states which is in question now with the debt ceiling right so then you know you have the yen you have the fucking english pound the english pound never wanted to be part of the euro which was always interesting you know and the globalistic movement to try to get yeah. one currency. Uh, um. <laughs> is that is that is is that the treasury treasury secretary <laughs> out there trying to tell me to shut the fuck up? Um, but they want stable coin. Stable coin is based on a, a national currency and stuff. So I don't know if that's what eventually will happen. But a lot of big people say the, the cryptocurrencies can eventually hit zero with no warning. Yeah, like no, it makes sense. There's there's no like real use for it yet either. It seems like just, uh, I don't know, but it goes up. It keeps like going up and stuff. Like, I don't understand it. Like, well, it goes up, it goes down. I mean, you know what? Well, Bitcoin went from, it was in the sixties and then it went down the forties again. That was now this week. If it's in the fifties, you know, if you, uh, if you trade it out, I'm looking at a photo of you now, dude. I think my video, I think my video went out. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm still listening. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's like I'm like oh, I like my video. Yeah, yeah. it's funny because you're in the tropical place, but you look like you're ready for the Antarctic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a mixed message, uh, you know. So yeah, it's uh, who knows what it is, but um, and, and something like that. It's always like people always always ask about weed stocks, and I'm like, you know, uh, federal you crime know. still is the problem. Like I mean, that's yeah. still that's still fe uh, federally legal versus like um, like you I mean we're like you. I mean, they're not going to blow up until it's legal on a federal level, I believe, anyway. Yeah, there's no way. There's just too many, there's too many headwinds at that moment, you know. Uh, but you got to, you know, and I always I say to investors, use, you know, invest in what you use. Like if you use Netflix, invest in Netflix. You know, if you're, you know, drink Coca-Cola, buy Coca-Cola. You know, if you, if you like fucking Chevys, make sure you buy GM, you know. So that no, makes sense. Uh, yeah, no, spend like, yeah, like shop with, but with your money, really, you know, it's like. Yeah, I told that to a friend of mine. He goes, okay, who, what company makes fleshlights? <laughs> <laughs> Natural petroleum jelly. I don't know. My best I think that's the brand. I think fleshlight's the brand, isn't it? It might be. I, I don't I, know. I, I, have to I, use I, I would, listen, Andy, I would never spend that much money on a piece of equipment that, you know, <laughs> for something. I'm not vouching for it. I'm not vouching oh, for it. I just, <laughs> I've, I've never used one. Have you ever used one? No, no, I don't have I, to. I'm good looking, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, I got 150 bucks in my pocket you know, <laughs> if I need to. You know what I mean? Come on. Yeah. Like, what happened to buying people? You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, like I, but you know, when you're a kid, you're trying to re, you're trying to relive that. You know, you, you, you know, American Pie. You know the story about that and the guy sticking his dick in a pie. Yeah, you know, yeah. But I, I could tell you, uh, the best thing I ever found as a child looking for a vaginal replacement when I couldn't find my own uh, at an early age was the. Uh, you know, the, when you rode a motorcycle, motocross bike, they had the, the pads that you put on the crossbar. Yeah. It had like a leather thing around it and a foam thing in the middle that you, it would open up. I don't like where this there. is going, but yeah, but well, I, know what, yes. I know what you're talking <laughs> That thing was very realistic. I'm just letting you know that thing was very realistic with a little bit of uh, shampoo. I was, I was hoping this went to like when I couldn't get pussy, I used the mouth. But no, no, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a motorbike. 
<laughs> you're wild. You're it's a wild ass answer. Yeah, it's a. Uh, but those days are past now. So now I just got if I need some fun, I just go to an Asian massage parlor. Yeah, <laughs> those North Koreans are great. Like, oh my god, dude! I mean, first of all, in all honesty, they are the greatest. Like my wife has a has a membership at Massage Envy, which is like an amateur. You know, people that get out of massage school, they get their license. That's the first job they usually get. You know, they're not the professionals that have their own clientele and stuff. And they don't ever massage me good. You, know, you massage me, it's like massaging a rock. I'm just a big, you know, <laughs> so you got to get, you got to get somebody. But these massage, they walk on you, they hold the bar, they tip their fink toes into you. So, yeah, listen, Asian massage, the ending is just like the cartoons in a Playboy. It just happens to be there you know, amongst all the other things. And, uh, yeah, I, listen, I've, I've been to so many Asian massage parlors. I think it's a good K to be naked in front of Asian people. So, yeah. I got kicked out of Panda Express 14 times already. <laughs> I can't even watch a fucking Jackie Chan movie without getting a bone. Yeah. Dude, like, there was an Asian massage parlor across from the strip club when I was a kid. Like, uh, they had like dollar drinks on Tuesdays. So we get like dollar Long Islands and get smashed to go over there. And then, like, like the first, but one of the times, like, I'd like tell my friends about it. So other buddies want to go. And like, we went like three people one time. And like, and like, they thought we were cops because like we all had like, like, I looked way different. And like, uh, that, though I didn't look like this, but, uh, we um yeah they thought we were cops and they tried to give me like the worst back massage ever like yeah. in the lobby like like uh and then like and then like gave me a coca cola and like three bucks I'm like like okay bye I'm like like they tried to bri- I don't know what the fucking happened I don't know what happened to be honest with you it was really fucking weird they gave us yeah. like a, so- a soda a bad back rub and like three bucks each like each yeah that you said they thought they thought you were the popo uh I, one of the last places I went to they had forehand massage yeah. What? And, and that's something where you have to be a fiduciary because it's double the money, but two chicks <laughs> massage you at the same time. That's, <laughs> that reminds me of office space. Like, what would you do with a million dollars? Like, like two chicks at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two. <laughs> two with a million bucks. <laughs> Get a that harem. The, that was, yeah. yeah. You sort, of, sort of market. So uh, what, are, what, what are your plans now? You're like, are you going to, uh, you're going to Florida for some shows now? Or like, wow. Well, yeah, I fly home uh, to South Florida tomorrow, uh, Wednesday. I'm going to be in Fort Lauderdale, Gatsby's joint. Uh, Jackie Sanchez is headlining. I just was a last-minute input there. And Jackie's a very funny young, uh, one of the top comics, young comics coming out of Florida. She's headlining it. Uh, I'm just going to – and I told her I'm going to do all – I'm going to do all new shit. I got a bunch of new stuff I wrote um, that I'm going to put, put out in that show. Uh, and then I'm going to be in Fort Myers, Florida, the west coast of Florida, this Thursday through Saturday, opening for Sean Jones, which would be great. Sean's hilarious. And, uh, you know, it's great when you have three days in a row at a club. You know, there's some clubs, you get four days, five days. And, you know, like uh, the, the comedy cabana in Myrtle Beach, which I was just there a few weeks ago, Monday through Saturday, you know, eight o'clock shows, Friday and Saturday, two shows. Dude, that's like the best, because when you do that many shows in a row, you know, you start developing stuff from being on stage. You know, because every night's another show. It's another 30 minutes, 30, 30, you know, whatever it is. And you're like, oh, man, this is a funny, you know, pit. It's something I'm going to add. You know, it's like, I'll share this with, like, I do a joke. Like, um, it's, I call it my cancel culture joke. You know, and it's like, you know, uh, you know, it says here that when you were 13, you showed your penis to this girl, you know, Cindy, whatever. I'm like, yeah, I did show it to her, but I was playing truth or dare. And uh, my friend Charlie either dared me to show my penis to Cindy or lick Billy Basso's dog's ass. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a pervert, but I'm not a fucking dog ass liquor. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so I was, for some reason, I was very, I was, I, one of the things I said, I was very fond of my, so I told this joke, you know, every night to one night, I'm like, yeah, I'm very, for some reason, I was very fond of my penis when I was 13. You know, people laugh, you know, and I'm like, and then I went to school and saw a bunch of other penises. I'm like, ah, it's not that big of a deal. So even, like just that little, just that little tag there, you know what I'm saying? At the end, yeah. made people laugh. Like it was another thing that only happened. Because you're doing like seven, eight shows in five days. You know, it's like, oh, this will work. You know, you don't have to go to a bunch of open mics during the week. But uh, yeah, man. So it's fucking, it's just great to be working. Well, yeah, check out uh, Dougie Dangerous online. Check out his, uh, if you uh, hunt him down, he's doing shows all the fucking time, it looks like. So, uh, um, and if you, if you like this, start this episode over, watch it again. And uh, if not, uh, watch uh, Wake Up with Dougie, uh, Wake Up Late with Dougie. We, uh, we just did that the other day. That comes out today, actually. But uh, I don't know when this, when this episode's airing, but it's probably already out then if you're watching this now and listening. Um, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll watch this episode again. Yeah, go to our fan page on Facebook. We have all the videos, all of our recent shows. Uh, we do a little thing called just the clip. So if you don't want to watch the whole hour, 
we have like little clips of a minute of certain parts of the shows. You can just check those out. So just click on our videos on the page of Just a Clip. We have a YouTube channel. You know, Wake Up Late with Dougie Show. Please subscribe to it. Please subscribe to my Dougie Almeida channel. I need a, That's the thing I need work on, dude. I don't have that kind of follow. You know what I mean? I just go and work. I manage money and all this shit, and I don't pay that much attention to my social media presence. But uh, trying to get that worked out, man. It's, we got it's a fucking million things you got to do, you know, to, to be big <laughs> in this business. This episode is brought to you by Heart Soul Heat. Go to HeartSoulHeat.com and get some spicy mustard. Uh, 100% American craft spicy honeys using raw, um, simple ingredients. Ghost honey is made naturally and gluten free, uh, sustainably harvested in the Midwest. So go to HeartSoulHeat.com and get some ghost honey. It's amazing hot honey. It goes on a bunch of different foods like ice cream and like cheese boards and fried chicken. I mean, and fruit. I mean, go to HeartSoulHeat.com. 